News alert amid breaking reports of a new immunity deal being granted in the investigation into former Trump lawyer Michael Cohen. Alan Weisselberg, the longtime former CFO of the Trump Organization. That, according to the Wall Street Journal at this moment. Let's bring in Brett Baer, anchor of Special Report. Uh, right now, we're going off the sources that are telling the Wall Street Journal that this longtime Trump Organization CFO has been granted immunity, Brett, in the Cohen probe. Does this escalate pressure on the president? Yes, if true, it does. We have our calls out uh, and expect to get our own confirmation of this, as we did yesterday um, with Mr. Pecker from the National Enquirer. Uh, this immunity deal, if this is how it has gone, this is the longtime CFO of the Trump Organization. Uh, that is a different level. It is a different uh, digging in to back up. Uh, the Cohen case and people, federal prosecutors usually do not give immunity deals unless they know there is some back information on the back end that they want to get to that increases the pressure on the target that they're going after. Who is that target? What is that going to look like? We don't know the outlines of that, but it does seem like all of this is, is amping up in the days and weeks that we've seen uh, just over the past uh, two weeks. Uh, you've heard the president on this idea of flipping when it came to Michael Cohen. Uh, the, a lawyer for the president is quoted in the Wall Street Journal who on Thursday said that this so-called flipping almost ought to be illegal. Um, the Wall Street Journal is saying that Weisselberg's not commenting. They reached out to him for, uh, for, uh, for comment. The Southern District of New York, uh, we have reached out to. Uh, they are saying no comment at this time. But to be clear on who Weisselberg is, Brett, uh, for everybody, and again, the news is that he has been granted immunity in the Cohen probe. This is the longtime Trump Organization CFO. He has served for decades for the president's organization as EVP, Executive Vice President, and Chief chief financial officer of the Trump Organization. When the president, uh, when Donald Trump became the president, uh, he handed over the reins of that organization, the financial assets, the business interests to his two sons, Eric and Don Jr. and Mr. Weisselberg. Exactly. So he is well positioned in, in knowing the Trump Organization inside and out, the finances that have gone on there for many, many years, uh, and is integral to the operation of that business. Remember, you have a number of things going on here. You have the Cohen case uh, and in the Southern District of New York. You now have the Manhattan U.S. attorney uh, saying, or district attorney rather, saying that they're going to go after uh, the Trump Organization and the Trump uh, charities. Uh, you have a lot of things uh, moving in at the same time while the president is pushing back on all of this, saying it all is all politically motivated. You wonder if he may have known when he was sitting with Ainsley Earhart about uh, this or the possibility of this when he was talking about that flipping uh, sentence. The, the Cohen case obviously came out of Robert Mueller's investigation. Robert Mueller kicked it to the Southern District of New York, and uh, it, it's my understanding that um, the acting U.S. attorney uh, recused himself and and then kicked it to career prosecutors in the Southern District, uh, an, a, an office that has, is notorious uh, for, you know, its Democratic leanings, people who dislike the president. So it's perhaps no surprise uh, that the Southern District has gone uh, so fiercely after Michael Cohen and now is apparently um, headed on to Weiselberg, the uh, former CFO. Yeah, you're right, John, and, and they have a history of, of being kind of pit bulls when it comes to this sort of thing, uh, and maybe on this specific case, uh, you're seeing some example of that. What we don't know is whether uh, Cohen is going to also uh, talk to Mueller or has talked to Mueller. Uh, we've seen Lanny Davis's appearances on multiple uh, news channels, including this show, uh, talking about what Cohen knows, what he might know, and how this is going to go forward. Uh, I, I think what we, we do know now is that the circle is expanding as far as people who they are reaching out to. And obviously, this is the second immunity deal that we've heard of in as many days. Um, that's significant. Again, they don't just kind of toss those things out uh, for nothing. And this is the CFO 
of the Trump Organization. Let me read the final um, line as, as, by the way, we're still going off the Wall Street Journal. We're trying to independently confirm this. Uh, but, Brett, the journal could not determine, it writes, whether Mr. Weisselberg told prosecutors that Mr. Trump had knowledge of those payments. And, of course, in the middle of all this, and, and with the Fox News interview with the president yesterday morning saying he didn't know until after the payments were made, that was called into question because originally he said he didn't know about them at all. Right, Brett? Yeah, I mean, the president's rollout of uh, explaining this um, has not been clear. The Washington Post uh, says it's a flat-out lie uh, in their fact-checking. I, I think you can look back at the statements, and clearly he was uh, not 100 percent truthful as he, he laid that out. You've got his answer to Ainsley Earhart saying he knew later on. Uh, the bottom line here, though, is that there were all these reports that uh, that he knew about a lot of things. He knew about the Trump Tower meeting before it happened, and that was cited to, uh, to Mr. Cohen. Well, it turns out Lanny Davis came out and said he never said that. And he testified that that wasn't the case. Um, so I think you have a lot of anonymous sources saying a number of things. What we have to go on is what people are saying to the cameras and by name. And uh, you have now a situation where more and more people are being kind of rounded up and used in this investigation. To what end? I think we have to find out. Uh, the, the argument, and I, I guess it's, it's hard to assess this from where you sit in Washington, but the argument from, from the president and his supporters is, all right, we're going to go to some uh, breaking news now. Uh, Fox News Alert and the Wall Street Journal is reporting that Alan Weisselberg, the longtime chief financial officer of the Trump Organization, has been granted immunity by prosecutors in the Southern District of New York, the same prosecutors who accepted the guilty plea from Michael Cohen, the president's longtime lawyer. Now, um, Weiselberg is described as the president's financial gatekeeper, and he is one of the people to whom the president handed over operations of his businesses when he assumed the presidency. Well, let's talk about all of this with Kimberly Strassel. She is a member of the editorial board of The Wall Street Journal, also a Fox News contributor. You have an article in today's Wall Street Journal, and I've alluded to it a couple of times, about the fact that you see uh, un unfairness, uneven-handedness in the treatment of the Trump campaign versus uh, the Clinton campaign. Would you, how, how would you assess um, this supposed immunity deal that uh, Michael Weiselberg is being given? Well, look, how did we get to this point in the first place? The, the special counsel was given a very broad mandate to look into whether or not these claims of Trump campaign, Russia collusion were true. And we've gone down that rabbit hole to where we get to Michael Cohen and immunity deals for, you know, the head of the National Enquirer. And I think, you know, Bob Mueller deserves some credit for looking into this. And, and you could argue that when he finds other evidence of crimes that he is obliged to pursue them. I think the question that a lot of people have is why is it only on one side of the ledger? If, if you're going to be talking about campaign finance crimes, uh, why is nobody, for instance, looking at the Hillary Clinton campaign and the Democratic National Committee, which hired an opposition research firm, but it gave money to a law firm in between, which then funneled it to that opposition research firm, never claimed any of that accurately on campaign finance records. Uh, did they do this with the intention of, of, of affecting an election? Probably. Uh, those are the things that Michael Cohen is accused of doing. And if the special counsel were looking not just at the accusations that were made, but at those who made them, I think we might be seeing a lot different people being in the news recently. Yeah, uh, Robert Mueller was charged with looking into Russian collusion, Russian election meddling. What would the CFO of the Trump Organization know about all of that? Well, right. And again, this is one of the problems with special counsels is you let them loose. And again, they feel as if they come across any evidence of a crime, they need to now pursue it to the end. Now, the obvious implication here is that Mr. Weisselberg is probably been brought in to testify to the question of whether or not Mr. Trump had knowledge of these payments. I guess we'll find out soon. No one has known yet exactly what evidence he gave and if it goes to that. But this seems to be the new focus of the special counsel. We have jumped 
from Russian collusion uh, and then even maybe obstruction of justice now to the question of campaign finance violations. And one thing I would note as well, too, even that is a bit odd because in 96, 97 percent of the cases, campaign finance violations are treated as civil matters, not criminal violations. You write that the country has watched the FBI treat one presidential campaign with kid gloves, the other with informants, warrants and eavesdropping. Well, and this is, again, I don't think anybody out there in the country is necessarily frustrated that a special counsel is looking into questions of Russian collusion. That, to me, was an important question to have answered. Um, but, again, you can't just look at that question and then when you find nothing, and so far there has been no public evidence that there was any collusion there, to then not ask the question, well, if that was all phony, how did it come to get purchased at the top levels of our government and in the FBI and in the Department of Justice? And I think you then have to look at the fact that it was the rival presidential campaign that supplied this dossier, uh, that there's a lot in there that seems to be incorrect, in factual, untrue. Um, there seems to be a lot of shenanigans in how it was given to the FBI uh, and the people who were working on it, like Fusion GPS, and they would seem to merit a look, at least as close as the one the special counsel has given to the Trump campaign. It's an interesting column you have in today's Wall Street mm -hmm. Journal. As I mentioned, Kimberly Strassel. Kimberly, thank you.